Hey guys, welcome to Gary's Potting Shed. Just want to give you guys a couple of uh, tips and give you a little bit of directions on what to do this time of year. I know that during the quarantine, this year in particular, more so than others, uh, more people are gardening than ever. So, I have a question. A lot of people ask me uh, lately, it seems like, what are you doing in your garden this time of year? Because we have so many plans. I'm sure in the previous videos, if you've been following us on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, uh, you've seen <clears throat> all these future plans that we've got going on and, and heard me talking about that. So it's late August, early September. Guys, it is hot. It is so hot. Heat indexes of triple digits, uh, a two week span where we're just in the 90s every single day. So what do you do this time of year? You can't really plant. You can't transplant. You can't divide. Uh, if you're an advanced gardener or just kind of playing around and experimenting, you can do some propagation right now if you have the resources to uh, do that. And there's some great videos online about that too. Uh, you can do a little bit of propagation and uh, rooting some of your <clears throat> softwood plantings and stuff, uh, perennials and stuff like that. But what do you do in your garden this time of year? Because we're kind of in that lull where we're not really creating anything horticulturally so here's what i'm having to do and actually this is what you should be doing if you're this time of year the flowers are looking pretty spent they're they're worn out they're hot they're tired i am too so are you it's just the way it is and 2020 whoo man what a year so the thing is is like i've said before in other videos or whatever we're not really in a drought situation but my house is it's the craziest thing in the world it can be raining in fact it is raining right over there behind me right now. If you go look at the current radar, you can see there's a real big cell going by and uh, nothing happened here. So here's what you can do this time of year on this beautiful, glorious morning before it gets 105 degrees. Here's what I recommend. Number one, water. Water, water, water. I'm watering twice a day, especially my containers. You really, really, really got to remember when you're watering containers, <clears throat> a couple of rules to follow here, like on this guy right here. Okay, the container, even though it's thick concrete, it doesn't really, it retains moisture inside there, doesn't dry out as fast as some of the other plastic or terracotta pots and things like that. However, on this particular container, there's one thing I do want to show you. Um... Look at that patina on there, guys. Isn't that beautiful? Absolutely gorgeous. These dry out. And if you've ever noticed that when you begin to water, whether you use a direct hose uh, with a, a sprayer or whatever, however you water, watering can, whatever you use, the water will pretty much run through it really quick, right? Well, here's the thing. I know it's a chore. I know it's aggravating, I know it's frustrating, especially if you're working and kids are getting back in school and stuff like that going on, the country's reopening back up and everything in most areas. The thing is, is just this, uh, there's so much you can do. You need to water these plants twice. What I do is, is every morning when I get my coffee, first thing I do is come out and start visiting my plants. And, uh, I actually grab the water hose and drag it around with me. I know that that can be very frustrating and very aggravating, but water them twice. This is the most key important reason why. The soil shrinks inside the pot. And what winds up happening is, is the water is going in. It's not even going into the soil. It's running down around the, the root ball and going right out the drain in the bottom. So you think, well, I watered my plant, but look at it. It's thirsty. <clears throat> water it twice. Go ahead and get it kind of wet down move to the next pot, wet it down. It's exactly what I do. I go from pot to pot to pot to pot. Then repeat, pot to pot to pot. Just follow that regimen all the way down. Now, when you're watering these plants, uh, don't flood them. Imagine like if you were trying to take a drink, if you were out here working in your garden and it's hot and, and you're sweating and you just want something to drink or whatever, so you grab a bottle of water and you take a sip couple of sips whether it's ice cold or whether it's just room temperature or don't let it get too warm but anyway the uh, just drink 
rehydrate yourself. That's very, very, very important. You know how you feel? Well, could you imagine how your plants feel? They, they're depending on us. So the thing is, is <clears throat> if you're going to drink like that, that would be fine. Now, when you're drinking from a bottle of water and you're taking a sip, you're able to take that sip, swallow the water, rehydrate yourself. It's refreshing. It's wonderful. And that's what we need. It's, nour it's nourishment that we need. The problem that I see a lot of people do is they just flood their plants. Could you imagine if you just like turned on the garden hose and just shoved it into your mouth? There's no way you could drink that quick. It would just be flooding. Most of the water wouldn't stay in. So that's exactly what I'm talking about. Water is slow and steady. The other thing you can do to these guys is it's still early enough in the season and there's still enough heat. Trust me on that one. It is hot and sticky and I'm already starting to sweat this morning. Um, Add some water-soluble fertilizer to your plants. They'll flush back for you. Give you a nice big show at the end of the season or whatever. Uh, water-soluble fertilizer. Follow the directions for whichever brand you choose to, uh, you choose to use or whatever. And uh, keep your garden looking fresh and clean all the way through. Another thing is deadheading. This is a great time of year, especially on your annuals. Go ahead and deadhead your annuals. Maybe go underneath the pots like we've talked about in previous videos. See this guy right here? See this leg hanging down right here? He just needs to be broken off, pinched off right there. Um, that'll, uh, that'll promote and stimulate better growth up here because the energy that this plant needs is not gonna be focused on this growth that's so far away from the root system. It's gonna stay up here at the top, keep it nice, compact. Now these had a pretty good haircut, so they haven't came back yet from that. Um, I am on a, well, let's go ahead and admit the truth. I am on a watering, uh, I mean not watering, uh, fertilizing um, schedule, but sometimes I miss my schedule. So they don't get it every week, like they should have probably, but they're getting watered every day and uh, makes a major difference. If you really wanna see those blooms push and you really, really, really wanna get that last end of season annuals, if you really wanna get that last uh, uh, big show of the season for that late summer uh, bloom time that we still have, go ahead and use a water soluble fertilizer and uh, you can pick that up at any nursery or big box store. I'm sure they all have them still in stock. It's kind of getting low on, on merchandise like that right now. A lot of stores, big box stores especially, are doing their changeover from the seasons, getting ready for fall, Halloween, things like that. So, keep everything deadheaded, keep it trimmed up, and uh, you should have great performance from your high-performing plants, and um, just keep kind of keep up with them. I'm sitting here picking the blooms off of this one right here. These are self-cleaning. No <laughs> deadheading needed on that one. Uh, other thing, perennials. There's a lot of perennials right now that the blooms are just spent. You too can trim those back and see if you can uh, create another flush of blooms on those. Go ahead and give them a little fertilizer depending on the variety. But a lot of things you can go ahead and get another bloom out of. So keep them watered. Put the water soluble fertilizer after. I always put the water soluble fertilizer after I water. I don't water it, water it in, but then I come back with a water soluble fertilizer and I slowly let it soak into around the root system on the plant. Now, talking about the quarantine and so many people gardening, <clears throat> that's the reason why I felt like it was important to, uh, to talk about this because a lot of you guys are first time gardeners, just like the location that I'm in. This is first season. So these plants are not established. So not even the annuals and the perennials, but a lot of my uh, plants that I've put in that I'm going to train or whatever, uh, my shrubbery and what I call structure in the garden and things like that. Like, for example, burning bush right here. Beautiful, beautiful plant. Lots of winter interest. That's going to put on a huge show. It's going to be really, really bright, fiery red. Uh, stems are gorgeous in the wintertime. All that stuff. Eliagnus. Silverberry right here, same thing. In the fall, those are gonna, autumn time, fall, late, late, late summer, early fall. Those are gonna come out with a very fragrant, small, tiny little bloom. And they also produce an edible fruit. I've never eaten them, but anyway, they're deer resistant, drought tolerant, everything else. 
when you read about your plants and it says drought tolerant, that means established plants. That doesn't mean plants that you just put in the ground that this is the first season for. So there are so many things you can do on these guys. Now, depending on your temperature and depending on the location of the plant, be careful uh, doing some pruning right now. If the plants are in the shade, you may want to refer back, if you keep a journal of what you've planted or you happen to keep the tags, which is a very good idea. I always keep all my tags. Uh, and I, cause sometimes I have to go back cause there's, well, there's quite a few different varieties, but there's going to be way, way, way more varieties than this. And every single one of those plants are going to have different types of instructions that come along with them. If you can't figure out what, if there's, if what you're trying to do is not on that instruction, 99% of the time you can either call your local nursery where you bought them. And if they don't have the answer, they can get it for you or call the, uh, the breeder of the plant, whoever germinated the plant, they're going to have the answer. So anyway, on your annuals, water, I'm watering twice a day, guys. Even on a, on a day where we do happen to get a small little rain shower, I still come in and water. I water before I water first thing in the morning and then I'm watering in the late afternoon, evening. I, I, I don't water past the time that it won't have time to dry the, the foliage and the blooms off before night fall. So feed, deadhead, do a little pruning and trimming on your annuals. There's your annuals. Perennials, same thing. Feed, well, these, some of the, it depends. It depends on which kind of uh, perennial you've got. Some of them are already done for the year. If you think and you read the variety and find out the information of your plant, make sure that it's the type that uh, it would be safe to go ahead and, and, and trim it back right now. But I normally on these things right now, the blooms are pretty spent. So what, I just go back and trim them off deadhead. And uh, if they're done, I actually kind of go ahead and cut them down. If they're done for the year, go ahead and cut them down. Um, this has been a very strange growing year. If you're a first time gardener, <clears throat> I don't think you really realize the difference because you don't have anything to compare to. This has been a very strange growing year. Some flowers have really, really performed and some just haven't performed that much. So what I'm getting at when I say that is, is uh, gardening can be hit or miss. It's a learning process, guys. We learn every day. There's no way in the world any of us could ever know everything. That's the reason why, um, like on your annuals, <clears throat> and you put your annuals out this year and they have just given you a show that I don't care if you're on a 10 acre beautifully landscaped lawn or a, a, a patio or uh, maybe you have a container on your front porch or out by your pool or on your balcony of your condominium or your apartment. It doesn't make any difference. You know what I would like for you to do? Take a picture, post it in the comment section or when you post it on your social media, make sure you tag me in it. I want to see your results. I want to see what you're proud of in your garden. I think that's a wonderful thing. I love to see what my subscribers are working on. I love to talk to uh, just people in general that are working in their yard and see what they've got going on. There are so many things happening this year. Look at all these annuals right here in this bed. These guys are looking really, really good. The blooms are really flushed out. They had a good feed last week. I'm actually getting ready to feed these guys today. They're really looking good. I had to come in and trim. You guys know this flower right here. You've heard me talk about it many, many times. Proven winners. This is Snowdrift. It's in the Vista series of the Super Tunias. Self-cleaning, uh, mounding form. I think on that one, it's 36 by 36-ish uh, growth. I planted in here to fill in these areas really nicely. One on this side, right over here, guys. I put another one. Now, these had a haircut not too long ago. But look at those blooms. Look how these guys have came back out. Isn't that gorgeous? Look how big they are filled in this whole area trying to keep them within the rocks off of the driveway and kind of out of those impatience right back there these are one of my very favorite plants guys can't lie next year i think i'm going to show you guys how you can garden without breaking the bank if you buy high performing plants like these super tunias what i'm thinking the vista series are the ones that i seem to have had the most luck for the huge they just grow oh they are beautiful what I want to do here next year, because this used to be a shade area, now it's in the sun. Uh, they're sun lovers. I'm going to plant those in this area. So, which leads me to my next tip. 
That's another thing. This is evaluation time. <clears throat> walk around your garden, walk around your yard, check out your pots, look at your patio, your porch, wherever you planted this year. Do some evaluations. <clears throat> Were you happy with the colors you chose? What are you gonna buy next year? What have you seen online? Maybe the nursery that you're at don't carry Proven Winners Super Tunias. The big box stores, very few of them do carry that variety. And these also made their debut for 2020. So what I'm getting at is, is go ahead and call your nursery. Ask them if they're going to be getting those in next season. There's homework to do. Get ready for next year, guys. Plan ahead. Go ahead and plan your garden for next year. I've got all kinds of projects planned. And I want to tell you this too. You don't want to really plant that much right now because you just in this heat and and this inconsistent uh, moisture that we've got going on i really don't want to plant my uh i guess i could, well if i had to i would but i don't have to if, if i had to i would uh go ahead and get those things in the ground and get them ready to go because guys i have 51 shrubs sitting in plants or sitting in plants. I got 51 plants sitting in containers that didn't make it into the ground. I'm keeping them in the shade. Here's what's important about that. A few videos back, I guess you saw where I went to Walmart, found a whole bunch of plants on sale uh, from like $19.84 marked down to, I think, $2.35. Great find, great buy. The plants look healthy. They look good. A little stressed because they're still in their containers. They don't like to stay in those containers. So here's what you do with all of your plants that didn't make it into the ground this year, guys. Keep them in a shady area that is well lit. Somewhere on the north side of a building or somewhere where they're not getting that baking sun that comes down on them. Do not let them bake in the sun. Think about wearing a jacket sitting out in the sun, the, the radiant heat that it would make. That's what those pots and liners do around that root ball. It just bakes the roots, guys. So keep them in the shade. Keep them spaced apart. Let proper airflow get around those plants. In a lit area, not direct sun, and water. Water, water, water. When it's time to plant, I would say probably the last two weeks of September, we're going to kick it in, and then the fun's going to uh, kick in in the yard. Things won't look so spent. The, the, the grass that we have, we, like we're not ready for our sod and irrigation and all that stuff yet. I've got too much construction going on to worry about all that at this point. But... What grass we do have in the yard will start to reflourish. Things will come out. Things will start looking good. And uh, uh, that's when the fun begins. But right now, this is just a time that uh, just because you say, well, I really can't do anything in my yard. I've already planted my flowers and they don't look that great. Well, just take care of them. Nurture them. Uh, keep them watered. Keep them fed. Groom them. And I'll guarantee you, your plants will put on a show for you and... It's just the most rewarding, satisfying thing in the world. Guys, we have a couple of projects coming up uh, that I can't wait to share with you guys about some container plantings. When I was talking to you about like going ahead and choosing what you're going to do next season in your garden, some of the plantings that I've done this year, just a couple that are, uh, I was able to squeeze in around the challenges that I was facing uh, with multiple, multiple things going on. Uh, I really want to show you a couple of recipes that I had great success with, some things that have really uh, drawn people to my lawn, uh, my garden area or whatever, people taking pictures, people driving by, stopping, they see me out working around the yard like they do or whatever, um, asking me questions, which is a major compliment, guys. That's a major compliment. So, annuals, water, 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 perennials, water, water, water new um newly planted shrubs first season shrubs that are not established the root systems have not had a chance to go down into the ground and establish themselves keep them watered make sure you water them enough to get those keep that root system wet don't overwater, but do not let most of them dry out this time of year it's just absolutely too hot if you see a plant wilting google see what you need to do about it um i know that like on my hydrangeas uh Macophilia or whatever, those don't like a ton of water. However, <clears throat> they're a little bit tricky in my zone because they don't want a ton of water, but they, they're not drought tolerant until they're established. And um, 
I'm getting a lot of spotting and stuff on my leaves. That's typical for this uh, late in the season and everything. Uh, this year, when these leaves drop, I'll make sure I pull all that back. I don't. I do not compost those leaves. Those leaves will go to the. You didn't make it to the cut pile, uh, but a lot of gorgeous growth still happening on these. They're still producing uh, beautiful foliage. Uh, I've got a few just like I guess rogue blooms coming up. This one right here is really, really, really pretty. That blue. Here's a little guy right here trying to come out and all that stuff or whatever. I'm just trying to keep these guys watered. I water those plants like that once a day. Things in the container, remember the rule on that. Wet the pot down on the, in, you know, kind of wet the soil and then repeat. Once I feel like I'm watering the plant and not just letting it run out the bottom, I water twice, twice a day. Then, doesn't take that long. Then, uh, in-ground plant depending on the variety and what their needs are water them perennials uh and things it's the same same type of regimen just figure out what you're what they need and stick with that weeding is huge this time of year you can go ahead and start mulching a little bit i'm gonna wait till the foliage drops off the trees wait till all the leaves fall and everything or whatever because once we get those uh composted now some of them is going to go directly into the the beds to help out with some of the uh uh the newly planted areas or whatever i'm not going to pile them up on there or whatever but just put a thin layer and those will start to decompose over the winter time and they'll be great for the soil and really put a lot of nutrients in there that's going to be great for next year the rest of them will wind up in the compost pile um so be ready for the leaves keep things cleaned up um trim right now is a great time like on these hydrangeas right here these are the limelights look at that beautiful bloom right there isn't that gorgeous look at those pink spots coming on there that means it's a little bit past its maturity once they go past that of, of maturity on open blooms this right here look at that beautiful foliage on there has that lime green chartreuse color with that pink these things have really performed uh, well for me this year actually have a couple of more getting ready to come out here see right here on the uh this stock right here hasn't came out yet but anyway these things are growing those were three three gallon shrubs um so a lot of things that are beginning to show up and bloom like the sweet autumn uh, uh clematis clematis depends on what area potato potato uh depends on what area you're uh, you're in for how you pronounce it or whatever those are in full bloom right now they are absolutely fantastic one of my favorite things and actually I still have a few of these look how pretty this this guy is guys I gotta deadhead this and start working on this a little bit look at this guy right here isn't that gorgeous look at that can you see those blooms right there hope that's focusing in for you guys those are absolutely gorgeous oh I just love hosta so anyway, I hope these tips and tricks kind of helped you and suggestions of kind of about what to do this time of year in your garden. Keep things maintained. Guys, keep it watered. Keep those hands dirty. I love to have dirty hands. That just connects me with the earth, grounds me. I'm a little bit high strung guy. I'm not sure if you can tell that or not. But um, working in the yard, working in the garden, uh, the accomplishments that I feel like I've made, especially when... I don't really plant for anybody except myself. But guys, when I'm out here late in the evening or early evening watering or late in the evening, maybe clipping some flowers, take them inside, put them in a vase or just kind of checking on things and looking around and someone stops and they tell me how beautiful everything looks and how gorgeous the flowers are. Can't believe that I've only lived here a couple of months, a few months this year, 2020. And the way things have matured and grown out uh, so far and the way they're performing, which all goes back to nurturing. So you gotta take care of everything. So guys, <clears throat> thank you so much for stopping by my channel. Thank you for stopping by Gary's Potting Chad. Hit the subscribe button. I hope you learned something today. I hope you got inspired. Uh, that transition coming up from summer to autumn is 
so much fun. I've got some crafts. I'm gonna show you guys some window boxes that you're gonna want to uh, see. In fact, I'm gonna try to do those a little bit early so to give you a chance to get things uh, prepared and ready in case you have to put them like on a, let me find this kind of list. Don't have to break the bank. You can go to thrift stores, um, anywhere to find some of the stuff. And I'm an out of the box thinker. So just be thinking about some of the things that you could do that maybe uh, aren't really that traditional. Sorry about the construction I'm in. I am in a revitalization area construction traffic constantly going by if they're not coming to my house they're going to a neighboring house things are going on around here it's so exciting there's so much energy and i love to watch this stuff come back to life that is exactly like the garden guys that is exactly like the garden thanks again for stopping by my channel and until the next video be kind to yourself be kind to one another <clears throat> get your hands dirty get out and share those pictures with me follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and uh, YouTube. Hit like, subscribe. If you have some plants you really want to show off, um, send them to me, guys. You can either tag me in them on your Facebook page or your Instagram or whatever social media platform you use. Tag me on them. I want to see what you've got going on, guys. I want to see how beautiful your results are this year. It is so rewarding and it is so encouraging when you find out that you inspired somebody, I get inspiration from you guys. So let's keep in touch on things like that. Let me know what's going on in your garden. Guys, let me know what you want to see next. Send me a message. Thanks for the emails that I've been getting and all the compliments and things like that, guys. Send me an email at garyspottingshed at gmail.com. Keep your hands dirty. God bless you. And we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.